It's a uh, last minute thing. I didn't, uh, I didn't forecast it last night. So hopefully somebody joins me here and tells me if they can hear me. Somebody who doesn't mind not being anonymous. I'm pretty sure I have good cell service, but there's noise, and so I'm hoping that uh, that I can be heard. So, all right, I might just have to get to it. Usually people can hear me just fine. So, first off, let me show you where I am. We're gonna get to this, this cook stove. And to make it more challenging, not intentionally, but the dogs wanted water. So I filled it with water for them to drink. So that's gonna make it a little more challenging using it as a cook stove. Oh, lost my only viewer. All right. <laughs> oh, maybe not. All right, so that'll make it a little more challenging, but we're gonna see if this is the world's simplest cook stove. But first, let me show you where I am. So I got the water right here. That's an irrigation canal. That's how we call them. And I'm in a beautiful location just outside of town. Now there's something special about this location for me. And that is that I began my outdoor adventures right there. When I was 13 years old, my dad bought that property. It has a house and we were on the river there. And uh, that's where I got to go out and play mountain man <clears throat> so this is a really special place for me that's uh belongs to somebody else now uh so i can't really go over there so much but it's fun to sit here and remember the place um also there's my truck it was a really steep climb coming up here and i thought it'd be fun to do it barefoot whoops so, me and the dogs made it. One dog is halfway up, poor girl. But uh, she gets tired quicker. So that's where we are, what we're doing. So I've got this cook stove. Somebody please let me know if you can hear me, if uh, you don't mind uh, not being anonymous. <laughs> so I did an interview recently with Mr. Dyer from Mr. Dyer's Music, uh, Musing, the um, Honorable Outfitters. And in it, I told him that I used this cook stove once. Cool, thanks, Chad, appreciate that. And Teotaki 12, I dot Mia, my eye. <laughs> Thank you, guys, appreciate that. Oh, and there's a bunch of crows flying over here, somebody. Anyway, um, so. Sean, my friend, my YouTube friend, uh, Mr. Dyer, he said, man, I'd like to see that when I described this stove. And so I thought I'd do that this morning. So this is my cook stove. All it is, as you can see, is a can. I need to change this so that you guys can see what I'm doing. Well... You can almost see. There we go. So all it takes is this can. And I found some 90% isopropyl alcohol. The dollar stores used to carry this for a buck. And now you can't even get it at their increased rates of $1.25. And that sucks. So I had to pay $2.50. So now I'm rethinking my... Um, when I can't use fire, I use alcohol stove. But now I'm rethinking that because I'm not sure it's still the most cost effective. So this dirt here is kind of sandy. That's nice. It's kind of coarse. So that's all you do. You just throw dirt in here. <clears throat> and then I did not collect these rocks. They were sitting here. So this is why it's so simple. You can literally Oftentimes, you can just use what's right here in your environment. Yeah. So, by scraping away a little bit of the 
ground. I'll, I'll adjust it so you can see it better. And we're gonna see if I can make some coffee. So these rocks are nice and coarse. Shoot. But I can't squeeze my stove in. Yeah, they do. Yeah, that stuff works well and they still sell it at the dollar store. Uh, the problem is that does put off harmful fumes. <laughs> I don't know if alcohol puts off harmful fumes or not. So, all right, struggling here because my coffee thing is much less narrow than this. So I gotta have the rocks close enough. Let me show you what I'm doing here. In shadow, all right. So the rocks have to be close enough to hold up my stove, but they gotta be far enough for the stove to fit. And something tells me it's gonna be really precarious. The dog's blasting dirt on me. All right, this is like the least watched film, uh, live video I've ever had, and yet I think it's the most interesting. <laughs> but uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying it. I'm loving it. I'm really happy out here. All right, so that's just as simple as it goes. Bam, just like that. Now we get to see if it works or if it blows up in my face. There we go. Now, I'm getting a little bit of wind, so I'm gonna put that there as a wind block. Well, how about that? Pretty simple stove. So, for those of you who are just now getting on here, all I did was take this can, put dirt in it, and throw some rubbing alcohol in it, and give it a light and uh, I used rocks that were here around me and now I'm just waiting for my coffee to boil so meanwhile I'll show you uh, people again where I am so that's the river that I lived on when I was 13 years old that's my uh, childhood tramping grounds and I'm sitting here against an irrigation ditch. That water there flows from a lake way up in the mountains, <clears throat> up near where some of my videos took place. And uh, these irrigation ditches are what makes the Yakima Valley the apple capital of the world and the hop capital of the world. It's amazing, in the late 1800s they started routing water from the mountains to the valley and adding a little bit of water to the desert makes it incredible farm grounds so yeah 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 um so yeah the simplicity so you can see how as chad pointed out this stove is so dang simple all it would take is um a couple of rods or i mean even a screen that's four foot or four inches by four inches or something that i could prop across the rocks because it's you know to make it more stable so uh my goal today was just to show how simple it can be all you got to carry is fuel and a can and i'll show you again it's working like a charm nice big flame the coffee's starting to come up now <clears throat> Pretty soon I gotta take my shirt off because I didn't bring a uh, 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 oven mitt or of any sort, any kind of hot pad to handle the coffee pot. So um, yeah, my goal was to be as simple as possible. But anyway, there's just a tennis ball over here. That's funny. It's too steep here. I'm not gonna play fetch with my dang dog. 
but uh, on the way up it was quite steep and I had my hands full so I couldn't even use my hands hardly. There goes a bicycle. Uh oh. There's a sheriff. What the heck? Hmm. As long as he doesn't take my dog. <clears throat> So anyway, I don't know what the sheriff's doing there. Um, uh, so anyway, that's the Yakima Valley. This right here makes it happen. In the 1800s, they routed it. And it's funny because, you know, it's all about the flow. The Romans figured out, well, even before the Romans, even in Jericho, the one with the walls, they figured out, I believe it was there. In ancient times, they knew that uh, the whole quarter inch per foot, roughly, if I'm remembering right, is enough flow to keep the water moving, but it's not so much that it uh, deteriorates the, the thing that it's, the container that it's using to flow it. So you have to, but then besides that, you have to account for the elevation so that you get the perfect flow from the mountains to the valley. So we have some routes around here. Right over there, I can see another uh, irrigation route. We have some routes around here that they did their math wrong and they, uh, they didn't make it to where they were going with the irrigation water. So they, they didn't find out until they had gone like 30 miles of uh, irrigation ditch. So, but a lot of them did get it right. Most of them got it right. And it's just really impressive to me. But yeah, that's what makes our valley what it is, unfortunately. Honestly, I'd rather it's just desert, but hey, whatever, it's history now. Yep, the coffee's coming up. Oh yeah, I don't have to take my shirt off. I'll just take my bandana off. Use it for a um, hot pad to pour the coffee into my cup and my hands were too full so I didn't bring any creamer if you watch my videos you know I like creamer but that's all right I'll have to tough it out like a mountain man so I'd say this is a uh, successful demonstration of how simple a cook stove can be that's pretty dang good coffee's almost done it's too hot actually uh, too hot for this coffee process it needs to be elevated and <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to tip it over when I go to pick it up, but that's good. All right, got it. And now, great little system. Just takes a can and some fuel. <laughs> yeah, really. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I think it's funny. This is the least viewers I've ever had. Uh, all right. Uh. All right, well, that worked. So, I'm not down in Oregon. I, uh, my house is still down in Oregon. So I can go down there if I want to. But, um, came back to Yakima. I've been trying for years to figure out a way that my animals can stay and I can go on trips. And my channel has suffered for it because it's hard to get out of, to get away on, 
on camp trips because I got all the animals. So I got the guard dog, thinking then I could leave him safe. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Um, but yeah, I thought I could leave my animals safe, and um, which I could. He did a great job. But um, but then I got to feed the dog daily, and uh, it, it, every I just kept having complication after complication. So finally, I decided, you know, I got to get out on a trip. It's been like five years. I've hardly been able to go anywhere. And so I took my animals, I took my birds to someone who could watch them, I took my two baby goats to someone who could watch them. I found a new home for the turkey because she was attacking the rooster and would have killed him. So I hated to do that. I loved that turkey, but, um, but I got it. I mean, I didn't want to just pin her up all the time. So, so all the animals are housed except for these three dogs because they're able to travel with me. I can't travel with Maximus because these two fight. Uh, Flint and Maximus would fight. Come here, Sparta. My third dog made it up here. Come here, girl. She's deaf. Um, she looks like a coyote. I don't want her to get shot. So the animals are all housed with people and uh, took the horses back to my, my pasture. I had to talk to the guy that I leased it out with. <laughs> that goofy smile. <laughs> hey, you. And uh, so I'm planning to go on a trip pretty soon down to Texas. And so that's what's going on lately. Um, big, big changes. I don't know if they'll be permanent. I'll be, I'm gonna go for about a month and then uh, come back home and go out to my desert property as a plan. So I hope to have a good trip down there um, on the way to Texas. Should be a good time. And there's a sheriff down there for some reason. I'm on public land, and I'm not being dangerous. I don't know what's going on. Might get met by a sheriff when I come down. <laughs> uh, so that's it. So I had a successful stove demonstration. I'd kind of like to keep it short because um, the live videos are fun, but a lot of people uh, they don't stick around for them, but I think this will be a good one that people will enjoy because it's a practical demonstration. And uh, so, but hopefully on my trip, I'll be able to do some camping on the way there. And the funny thing about my lifestyle, as you know, I've simplified it so simple that I know what foods I eat, I can cook simply. And um, so I'm looking forward to traveling because it's kind of like having this simplistic uh, camping ability is a useful skill. So when I go traveling, obviously I don't need a hotel. I don't need to eat out at restaurants and I can um, just uh, live cheap and travel cheap. And so it kind of works for, for living, for historical camping, for modern traveling. Uh, I went to Italy a few years ago and I want to travel again in other countries sometime. But I still got the dogs, so I'm not going to abandon my dogs for very long. I, I might be able to find a place for them for a week. I tried to find a place for them for this trip, but that's only because it's so dang hot in Texas and these dogs don't endure the heat very well. Um, but then on the other hand, I didn't want to leave them. And so what I concluded was uh, getting a car with air conditioning. My truck doesn't have air conditioning. I don't care about air conditioning. But uh, for the dog's sake, where we're going, they're gonna need it, so. Anyway, uh, anybody's got any questions or comments, say them now. 
Otherwise, I think I'm going to make this just a short video. So, thanks for joining me, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a great time. I love being up here. Uh, I didn't go all the way. There's still another bit to go to really get the full view. But the view is pretty cool up here. Out there is, um, these are the hills, and over those hills is where one of my properties is. And um, out that way is where I go camping up in the mountains. So it's really cool. I love it around here. Yakima Valley is a really great place. Thanks, JD. Appreciate that. <clears throat> All right, guys. Take care. I'll catch you next time.